name is Colin from the Waring School Brickwalls. We've learned a lot in the three years we've been working on FLL. So we've compiled a list of programs, ideas, software, design, code, etc. that we think would be really awesome for starting FLL teams to know and that we wish we knew when we were just starting it. Welcome to Brickwalls Blueprint. <music> One of the things we really wish we knew when we started out was gyro steering. Now, this is a basic EV3 program with nothing in it so far, and we're going to show you how to build a gyro steering. But first, what is a gyro steering program? Well, the robot won't naturally go straight if there's any imperfections on the wheels or board at all. All it says is for the motors to do this many rotations, and so it won't actually go perfectly straight if you just use a move motor block. However, you can use the gyroscope sensor to tell when you've turned off course and actually correct back to your original course from an off course position. And it's super helpful for remaining accurate over the relatively long distances of an FNL board. So we start out with a loop because a gyro program is constantly changing and adapting to new information. It's called a feedback loop. And the way that this is going to work is take uh, data from the gyro and then add it into a motor block. So if we add a motor block and then at the end we add a stop motor block, um, we basically built the actual part of the program that moves. We set this to on and we set this for um, just stop because we want it to stop after the loop but also in the loop, we don't want it to keep going one rotation, one rotation, because otherwise we'd only get about one rotation, or we'd get exactly one rotation of granularity for adjusting to the gyro. Whereas with this system, we can actually update our info and our steering course every time the loop runs, which can be very, very fast and many times per second. Next thing we're going to do is actually get our gyro block in there. Um, the basic gyro block will just give you an angle, and this is actually what we want. It will just give you an angle that it has deviated from its course. So we then need to feed that in to one or two math blocks, depending on how the program works. We'll show it with two math blocks, um, just to sort of show the, the uh, slightly, not, not really more advanced, but more versatile program. Um, so one we set to multiplication, which is called the gain. Uh, if your robot is backwards steering or the gyro faces backwards, you might need to play around with the gain. If it's not correcting as much as you want it to, that's when you want to play around with the gain. Or if it's overcorrecting, then you want to change the gain. So normally it would either be 1 or negative 1, but it might occasionally be something else too. So we're just going to use a data wire to actually bring the gyro over into our multiplication block. And then another data wire over from our multiplication block into our addition block. Now the addition block will almost always be set to zero, but if you're already plotting a course at like say 30 degrees, this will allow you to just automatically adjust for that by entering a uh, negative 30. Um, this basically doesn't really get used much except if your rod is like veering to one side or you're steering at a very specific angle. We then just put this into our steering block and that's essentially a basic gyro steering program. We'll add one more thing, which is to reset the gyro at the beginning, which is pretty important because otherwise the gyro will be calibrated to whenever the robot started up, which could be back in the pit, at the table, or just whenever you last rebooted the robot. Um, and so this can actually reset it in the middle of a program running and set it back to, all right, my current course is zero. So this is a basic gyro steering program. This will take the gyro's input, adjust it, and then use it to actually change the steering as the robot is driving to basically end up with a program that can move very straight rather than one that if it veers off course has no way to actually correct itself. Uh, we stop at the end, so this is completely self-contained and will work in the middle of a program, the beginning of a program, end of a program, or as its own even. Now we need to set an end condition though, because right now this is just going to run for an infinite amount of loops. We're going to set our end condition to logic, 
um, though we could set it to a specific color thing, but we actually like doing that because then we can take sensors inside the loop and manipulate them in our own ways. So we've done things like average the two motors or saw if two color sensors were both reading the same number. And you can do that with just logic blocks and these data blocks. You just then um, find the compare setting, uh, go to color uh, on this specific block, and in this instance, the default is it's set to am I reading red, but we can set that to whatever we want. Um, so let's just set it to blue and then uncheck red so it, it only sees blue and not blue and red. And then we can just drag this data wire, which is actually a logic data wire, over here. Um, and so this will actually stop the program when the third color sensor has seen blue which is actually a program that we've used. This piece of code we have used um, even in very recent competitions, and it's so helpful. The basics of this gyro steering program, this and the loop, are in basically every single one of our programs that we write. However, it's hard to work with big chunks of code like this at a time, so we're gonna turn it into a my block, which is basically your own uh, little move steering block. You can even make it have the exact same parameters as a move steering block if you want, but we're gonna make them have some gyro steering specific parameters as well. So first what we do is select this whole program, uh, except this little starting block, make sure it's all highlighted blue, go to tools and then my block builder, and once we've done that, we can just set some things like the icon, uh, the name. So we can set the icon to that. We can set the my block name to just gyro steering. Um, and now we can add some parameters. The first parameter we're gonna add is gonna be our speed. So we're gonna go into parameter setup, um, call it speed. We're gonna make the default three because uh, that's just a speed we use a lot and that way we don't have to keep adjusting it every time we bring it into our program. And then we're gonna um, choose a little icon for it. So there's a, there's a cool, uh, yeah, there's these symbols all here. And then we can move on to the next one, which we are going to make our gate. Now this is a gyro specific block because it has to do with how the gyro is interpreted in the mode of steering. So we're gonna call it game. We're gonna make the default run because that's what works on our robot. Um, we're gonna to go to parameter icons and just call it that little X because it's a multiplier and multiplying is you know normally represented with a little X. Um, the next one is actually just going to be our steering angle. So at what angle do we want to steer the robot? Um, this we are going to use as a um, as default value zero. We're gonna make it, uh, I think if we scroll down a little bit here, um, uh, a little bit down, there should be, um, uh, there should be something that represents turning from side to side. Uh, yeah, these ones. Um, and then that's basically what we want. So we can finish it up here. Um, we could add more parameters. We could add something like the color sensors parameters, um, but we're just gonna finish up the my block here. So now that we have our my block finished up, it's time to finish it. And it will then open in another little tab. And it will give us these three data wires. So actually we have a slight error. So we can actually move this plus to before the gyro um, and just change the data wiring uh, around as that sort of requires. Actually, if we, if we undata wire it, that might make it uh, work better. Um, and then undata wire the gyro. And then if we just pull this to actually right here, because um, uh, after the gyro, because um, if we actually do that afterwards, it will only affect the steering rather than being a specific angle. So you could do it like that if you were used to the conventional steering system, but we work with angles and we want to know what our exact angle will be traveling at. It. So then we're just, we're just going to rewire this quickly. Um, and it's time to add these parameters in. Now, what we can do is um, just use them as any old data wires. So if we drag our turning one into right here, 
um, and then next we drag our game into right here, which is our little game slot. Um, and then finally, just drag our steering into or <laughs> speed into our power. And we could have added something for the color, but I wanted to make the program show uh, just the very basics. And you can add any end condition you want and then add your own parameters into the mod block. So if we go back to our original program, we'll now find that all it is is this teeny little block. And we can quickly change these values by just clicking on them and, and editing them. So this is a really quick way to get really good gyro steering programs into your code because rather than copy and pasting or rewriting that whole section of code, you just quickly make it a mod block. You can also do this with code that's already in your program. So you can just select the code you want, add the parameters, and it will basically collapse down into a mod block with no real disruptions on the code that you've already written. So we find this extremely useful for getting our robot to go straight and it's really indispensable to our current coding strategies at this point. This is Studio 2.0. It's Lego design software from Bricklink, and so it has every single part in their category, and it's just generally super awesome. It allows you to make really high quality renders, which we use for our website and YouTube channel. And it also allows you to basically design anything you want digitally, and then also stress test it, check it for structural um, problems or possible failures, build instruction guides and all of that. So we built all of our attachments and robots before even entering uh, the makerspace in this software, because we can prototype it, we can design it, we can share files online, uh, work on it even when we're not actually here or when we just can't be here. So it's really awesome software. Um, and while it takes a, a little bit of time to learn and to really get used to compared to some older software like Lego Digital Designer, it has more parts and is just a lot more versatile in a lot of different aspects. I would highly recommend this software to really anyone who wants to work on um, any of their attachment design or robot design. So this is something that we use on basically all of our attachments. It actually will guide itself in to mesh with the mission model if we need really good accuracy to then get a grip on something to basically use our motors on the mission model. I have a weight block here, so that's why that mission model didn't work. Um, so if I just push this in, even slightly off, you can actually see that it will auto-correct itself in. And if I hold the mission straight, it's fine about a little bit, it really just meshes perfectly with the mission model basically every time. And if you're anywhere within this area, and at really any angle too, because it can also sort of guide you in like that, then you're going to achieve this position by just pushing forward with the robot. So we use these a ton of attachments because they add just so much reliability for literally like five minutes worth of work. You can also add special cutouts, so if you want to like do one at an angle, and then add cutouts like here. And you don't have to necessarily use these type of sort of straight angled pieces. There's more um, like those, like these, um, as well as these. And then also, these type of sort of curved pieces can work really well too on certain missions. Um, because they also just guide the robot in. Although we recommend double, doubling these up because otherwise sometimes they don't have the height to actually get um, to the mission model because there's just very slight thickness from this lock that's used to keep the mission models on the board. Uh, we use this in basically all of our attachments because it's just so useful for adding a little bit of reliability and we really just highly recommend something like this to go on front of almost any attachment. So our robot has these two gears on top. We initially tested robots that actually had sort of a thing on the side that the attachment plate would mesh with, but you actually had to pin it in, and so that just really didn't work very well. So we swapped to these drop-on attachments, 
Um, as the name suggests, you can literally just drop them onto the robot, and it gears are right, um, then they'll mesh. So the really great thing about this is in the middle of a competition, rather than putting a whole new attachment on or pinning it in or trying to only have like one claw, if you just put your medium motors to these gears and then have it on the top so that you're not fighting gravity, you can just drop an attachment in in the middle of a competition and that saves you a ton of time in that precious two and a half minutes. Um, all of our attachments, I pretty obviously use this system because that's our robot, and we find it really useful um, in competitions to be able to just do this. Um, additionally, we've used uh, dog gears before, which actually mess from above rather than from the side, but we found that these gears are just a lot better due to the way that they can drop on a little more easier than dog gears that we've previously used. Um, there isn't really much to say about this one. It's just a really, really uh, awesome way to design attachments. And while it takes a little bit of extra robot design initially to figure out, um, just 90 degree gearing it and bringing it up so you're dropping your attachment on rather than pinning it on or having like one claw or arm or something just really helps your overall FLL strategy. Our last tip is just generally about the board. We don't actually go out and do all the missions we're going to do in a singular run. We do it in multiple runs. That allows us to change attachments between missions to generally end up with a more versatile robot. Rather than just having one attachment that can do maybe two missions, we have like four attachments, but that combined can do, you know, almost all of the missions on the board. Uh, we would also recommend grouping the missions you do together geographically, so maybe Grabbing this drone and putting the treehouse on and putting the bat on the treehouse would all go together well because the robot can just drive here, have a single attachment that does all of that, and then back away. When you have two motors and uh, things like passive attachments where you literally just take driving into it and translate that into power either by having it turn something or by pushing something back, it allows you to get a lot done um, just by putting the robot into one area and then executing a lot of different missions. This has been the thing that's really uh, allowed us to do a lot better than we have in previous years. As the first year, we tried to do a lot of uh, singular runs that were just one mission, and we found it really great to group missions together logically, but also to not try and do everything in one run. It allows for a really good mix of versatility as well as sort of mission completion and actually being able to do all of the missions and do them all in a good, reliable way. Now, our final tip is to, uh, to run a YouTube channel, preferably with a tutorial series, perhaps called Blueprint, with a cool logo with these, like, blueprinty things on it. Anyway, we hope that you enjoyed this episode, and subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on Twitter, and uh, just generally keep watching for more tutorials and more information on FLL and our progress during the season. Thanks for watching.